I do want to start with Secretary Ben Carson and our exclusive interview today on a crisis that touches all of us, housing and its affordability in this country. Take a look at these numbers. Uh, we talked to Secretary Ben Carson about what he agrees is a crisis. One in three Americans pay more than 30 percent of their income in housing costs. That's very high. That's 40 million Americans struggling to make ends meet. The national average monthly rent, $1,400 in April. And the big cities there, New York City, $4,100 on average. LA, DC, Seattle, all over $2,000 a month. Chicago, Denver, Atlanta, other cities that are all above average. We uh, caught up with Secretary Carson today because he's putting on a showcase of what he says is a affordable housing solution. Tiny homes, mobile homes, and trailers that are all on display on the National Mall. Okay. So what, why, ha, why bring out all these mobile homes out to the National Mall on the shadow of the Capitol? Well, you know, right now we're having a, a tremendous problem with affordable housing in this country. This is America. This is a place that is the can-do place, a uh, place of innovation. And that's what we're showing here. We're showing the technological innovations that can help address the affordability problem. You know, a, a unit like this tiny home that's behind us costs a fraction of, of what a new, uh, average new home would cost. Do, do you think the situation right now with affordable housing, which you've taken on, mm -hmm. would you call it a crisis? Yes, I would say it's a crisis because even though the economy is chucking along extremely well, if you're spending, you know, 30 to 50 percent of your income on housing, you don't really have the opportunity to do the other kinds of things that allow you to enjoy life. So that's, that's a problem. But you can see it's actually, you know, it's a nice little sitting area. Yeah, this, this is pretty fancy. For, so how, how are buildings like this one, how can that solve the affordable housing crisis? Uh, just by uh, being much more affordable. So. Would, you, would you live in one of these, Mr. Secretary? Uh, if I had to. You look very comfortable. <laughs> What's the biggest thing you've learned on the job these past two years? Um, the biggest thing is probably learning how to deal with bureaucrats. Do you uh, consider yourself a bureaucrat now? No, I'm definitely not a bureaucrat. I'm anti-bureaucrat. Because bureaucrats tend to think the rules are more important than the goals. And surgeons tend to think the goals are more important than the rules. And, uh, but, but we've been working to remove a lot of the bureaucracy, uh, trying to speed things up. You've taken a lot of heat from Democrats. They have taken aim at your policies. They've taken aim at your leadership. One of these uh, new policies says if you are uh, an American citizen, you're a legal resident, you receive public housing assistance, and you happen to live with uh, a niece who is undocumented, that you would no longer qualify. Is that Well, the, the rule actually states specifically that the Secretary of HUD may not provide housing assistance to anyone who is here illegally. It further states that if the Secretary discovers that someone who is here legally is harboring someone who is not here legally, that he must end their assistance. It specifically states that. Why push this? Was this an idea because you of, came up with on your own? Because it's, because it's the law. And, you know, we're a nation of laws, and if the lawmakers don't like it, they need to change it. That's, and your own agency says 55,000 American children could be evicted uh, under this policy. And I think we also talk about the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, who are waiting for assistance who are here legally. Another policy that Democrats have uh, given you some heat for is this rollback of anti-discrimination uh, policy. The equal access rule was put in place, as you know, right. in 2016. Um, why did you take that on? Was there, you talked about uh, we have a letter. Role. You said there were some concerns from residents a lot of and residents. providers. What were those concerns? What were you hearing? Well, I had uh, a lot of women's groups. We got tons of correspondence from women's groups, and I've had some come and visit me at HUD uh, who are in women's shelters, in many cases trying to escape abusive situations, mm -hmm. and they say, then, you know, a, a phenotypical male comes in there uh, and wants to be with them in their bathroom, in their shower, and they feel that their rights are being violated. 
So what we're saying is we want to be fair to everybody, but we don't want anybody's rights to trump fairness for another group. I've got to ask you about Oreo Gate uh, and your appearance before the committee a couple weeks ago. Did it's been well litigated. Yeah. Uh, you say you misheard, but does the criticism sting? I mean, you had a good sense of humor about that. I, you know, I, I expect criticism. Uh, you know, we don't really talk about Rios anymore. We talk about foreclosed properties. Uh, I can honestly say there has not been a single conversation I've had since I've been here where we talked about Rios. Do I know what they are? Of course. Could I remember what the O was at that particular moment? No. I couldn't, but that happens to everybody. You know, we, we use these acronyms all the time. Half the times when I say, and, and that means what? They don't know what it means, but they know what the concept is. You know, it's silly. You know, when we engage in aha, gotcha stuff, when we have such big policy issues to deal with, and that's what I want to talk about. How do we actually solve these problems, not get off into the, the weeds of, you're evil, you're incompetent, you can't do this, your mama sucks. You know, give me a break. Let's go check out the kitchen. Walk <laughs> well, down it's the hall a, here. It's a nice kitchen. And you see the bathroom here, too. You're the only African-American member of the president's cabinet. Do, do you feel lonely? No, not at all. But, you know, again, it, it goes back to being a neurosurgeon. You say, how does that work? Because as a neurosurgeon, I operated on people from every part of the world. And when I open their head, I'm operating on the thing that makes them who they are. It's not the skin, it's not the nose, the eyes, or the hair, it's the brain. So I look at people and I think about people at that level and not on a superficial basis. Secretary, thanks so much. And our thanks again to Ben Carson for his time there. And he says, uh, Ann Flaherty is our uh, agency's reporter and producer. And he says he's planning to leave office at the end of the president's first term, if not before. This is clearly one of the things we learned today. You were there. Uh, he really chafes at some of, the, some of the constraints of the job and the politics of the job. He does, Devin. I think that he, he likes the idea of serving his country is what he said to us, but he doesn't like the idea of all of these bureaucratic rules that he has to abide by. Um, and I, I think it's also hard for him to sit in these hearings and to be criticized uh, so roundly from Democrats on policies that he thinks are necessary to move the nation along. And, and we should say, as a footnote, uh, it didn't make it into the cut of our piece for time, but uh, he did win some praise this week from one liberal icon in uh, the Congress, right. uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York. She's actually tweeted praise of Ben Carson. Well, on a very narrow issue, though. Uh, what she was talking about was the one-strike rule. He said he was willing to discuss it or to revisit it. This is a federal housing rule that says that if you commit a crime that you might, you can be kicked out of federal and housing. And he told us he'd be willing to meet with her, so we'll see if that ever happens. Mm -hmm. And Flaherty, thanks so much for your Thank reporting. You. Much more from Anne uh, and the team on ABCNews.com.